Hey everyone, this is Jaxie, and today we are going to get excited about history with Panzer Corps. This is Mission 3, LODs, and what is happening in this mission is you have some auxiliary units over to the east that are trying to find a back door around all of the fortresses, and it is your job to rescue them. So if you want the decisive victory on this one, you have to make sure that you save most of those auxiliary forces, and then you need to take all objectives, which means not just going through the fortifications, but actually doing a double envelopment from the northwest and from the southeast to make sure you get all those objectives. And here right now, we still have a good amount of prestige saved up, and I still have quite a few units, especially with all of those special gifts and things. I'm not really hurting for a core, so I'm going to fully upgrade everyone with the elite replacement, so I'm not going to lose any sort of experience. And we can see that's one route we're going to go over there, flanking around to the north and then to the east. I'm going to fan out my infantry pretty evenly. I want some of my engineers in the middle, just so if I have to make some sort of push against the forts, I have the option. Engineers and pioneers are great against fortified cities and trenches and things like that. I'm going to have my panzers behind the main infantry because they do get extra movement, and so I should be able to keep everyone moving up. My two artillery pieces going to be central to suppression and being able to move forward. And for my air force, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to have them all close up in support. Still have some extra infantry, some recon, and my AT gun. I, I'm going to have them there just in case they do some sort of counterattack. And we shall see. So gearing up, and let's get ready to start our turn. All right, and so we are going to start off with clear weather. That is lovely. And right now we are looking at our starting disposition, have all the forces ready. So here are the auxiliary units, a lot of armor, and they're surrounded by infantry and anti-tank guns. There's trenches over in front of Lodz, so we don't want to attack from the front. We want to get to those units and then go around through all of those objectives to the north. And then as we're pushing to rescue the auxiliary units, we can go that direction as well. So double push with two artillery, with three tanks, and a lot of infantry. I should be good. I'm going to fan out my infantry and just do a bit of scouting. You can see that I still have a bit of an infantry advantage. However, I do find some artillery early. Luckily, it's only five steps. So not super worried. And... I always want to make sure I use my good Stukas, not the recon ones. However, it did not matter. Bombing in the woods, unfortunately, works kind of like it does in decisive campaigns. It really cuts down on the effectiveness of the Lufafa. My fighter, though, they managed to snipe one step out of the woods. And right here, the way they set it up is pretty interesting because these units will just bottleneck and you really can't go through the infantry that easily. Not when they're in a wood hex and in a city hex. So I want to move these guys as much as I can, but it's not worth attacking through and reducing all their steps and making them just too weak. And there, I, I don't know, I'm checking in vain. I don't think there's anything I can do. But I'm going to move the panzers up, do a little extra scouting, see what I will have to fight through to get to my auxiliary units. Because like I said, even if it kills me, it's a goal that I want to do all decisive victories. I don't want to settle for a limited victory. I want to keep fighting and going for it, even if tactically it stretches me too thin and makes me waste prestige. That is the set goal of all of these campaigns. And right there, I'm hoping I don't need the second infantry or even the tank as long as I bring that artillery up. Might as well see what I can do. And oh, those Stukas, <laughs> horrible results there. Two in a row and just nothing. Do I want to move you up? Uh, yeah, we'll go this way. The northern flank, I'm hoping with two infantry, one tank, one artillery, I have most of my 
groups of units there they can support each other i won't be able to take that point right away but at least it's open that's nice <sighs> these guys say they're gonna get good results with that artillery and yeah that's what's supposed to happen i mean y you trust the combat a little bit but artillery will support i have to know better it still works out in... Ooh, never mind. <laughs> right as I was going to say, it works out in the end. That's really rough. But I'm just going to have to take it. There's not much I can do. At least that artillery is open. Um, I do have almost 1,500 prestige right now, so I'm not concerned. I will be able to eventually reinforce those guys if I need to. And right there, we can see that they're going to move in with some anti-tank units. So I can't take too long. I get some reinforcements for infantry. That's pretty nice. I will always take that. And I can get some great results with my Stuka hitting an unsupported anti-tank gun. And I think I'm going to take that. I'm going to try to slow them down so they can't destroy those auxiliary units. Not only are they just part of the objective, but really they're nice to have any sort of extra unit. With all the cities and things, there still are flanking opportunities, and so I still am going to want those tanks. And my fighter's about as effective as the Stukas were last turn, and more Polish reinforcements. Man, these last couple missions, they really do the rope-a-dope on you. They just want to pull you in, and as soon as you think you're safe, they're going to hit you with the counter. But I like it. I, I think it's a really interesting scenario design to make it so you don't just feel like you're rolling over Poland, that you're actually fighting and it's difficult to achieve an initial breakthrough. There, of course, I get a rugged defense. However, only one damage on an auxiliary unit. I will take that any day. And that actually pops a couple of these units free. So I'm going to send them to the west, get them out of range of those AT guns, and I can mop those AT guns up from the air at my leisure. Not really worried about that. So can I take you with just one infantry? No, but I will always take attacks like that where you don't have to suffer any sort of counter. And they're attacking tanks in the cities. That is the risk, but at least there aren't any casualties on my end. I can't complain too much. The recon, however, they are going to lose a couple vehicles. And here, let's get rid of this artillery. Open up, take my first objective. And we can see that in front of Lodz, there's three bunkers. So I'm not, and then trenches behind it, I'm not going to want to just come at that recklessly. I'm going to want to start doing the double envelopment. I'm going to heal up my engineers just in case I have to go through one of those forts to open up some more um, zone of control and things like that. Recon, let's exploit the multiple move and get some more prestige in case I have to keep repairing units. You'll notice ever since the first game... Um, I just have not been able to get away with not doing any sort of repairs, but at least I banked some nice prestige. And that way, if I have to do upgrades or repairs now, I already have a good core of units I can use. And we're getting some tankettes, some infantry, some cavalry, and those Polish cavalry move so far. It's amazing. You just gotta watch unsupported artillery. But... Hopefully something, and yeah, now we're just going to have to retreat. I love the Stukas. I mean, they're so powerful, but they really don't have good range. And this airfield, I don't think I can take it yet. It'd be really nice if I could take it this turn and not move the Stukas, but I'm going to be better safe than sorry. And even though it's going to be a two-move process, I'm going to have to just slowly get them out of there. And even the fighter, unfortunately, not even going to be able to attack unless I hit these units, and I don't know, I really wanted the mechanized units and the anti-tank guns, but free hit on a cavalry, why not? It is better than nothing. So maybe, what do I want to do? We'll move these guys up. That's a pretty safe move. I'm going to have them go either north or to the east. You can see right there, even with good infantry, you're just going to get horrible results against forts, unless you have 
engineers and artillery support, it's just not worth doing a frontal attack. And here, I'm going to get multiple points of contact so I get those nice concentric bonuses. And that may be what I need. Artillery, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do anything till next turn. And they are just really entrenched. I'm worried sometimes forts will attack adjacent units on the enemy's turn, and sometimes they won't. But if they do, it's often almost just a free attack, and it's real nasty to have happen. And now, where do I want to put my recon? I'm going to have one go. Let's do northwest and scout and they do have a couple units so i can't just cross the river there undefended but it is better than nothing and i think that river is actually the i'm going to try this bajura bazura and this is going to be important for the next mission as long as i make it there and it really was important to the campaign um historically in case white the Battle of Encirclement did focus around pinning multiple Polish groups to the Bzura, and that was really where the Germans saw using um, mobile warfare and what we now call Blitzkrieg, they were really upgrading the old German form of Bewegungskrieg or War of Movement. And they were able to press the enemy into a pocket, cut them off, and then slowly reduce it. And it worked marvelously. And right here, even without artillery, I'm able to get some nice attacks. Ooh, not bad on that cavalry. Some nice attacks because my infantry... I have a lot of uh, Gebirgsjäger, the uh, mountain troops, and I have a lot of um, pioneers. So they have pretty high attack, and they do pretty well against infantry. I think Gebirgsjäger actually do better against infantry than regular infantry do. Although, if you see Poland right through the center of my line, they're going to try to start flanking me. So I can't totally let my guard down. I'm going to have to watch. Turn 4... And you can see they have a lot of objectives behind Lodz, so you really got to get this double envelopment. And that's what I'm going to slowly creep up and do. It's nice that a lot of these small cities on the way only have half infantry units. That makes life easy. And right here, this terrain, they're really not wanting me to just get a super easy crossing. It's a pretty well-designed scenario. Can I go through... No, I don't think I can go through. Maybe I'll wait. I don't know. Let's do these easy moves. Get my Stukas back on track. I think they are going to be my X Factor this campaign. Yeah, that's what you get out of a 109. Because any sort of Polish tank or tank at counterattack out in the open, they're going to do real rough damage if they hit anything in a field. Ooh, that little airfield had an anti-tank gun in it, so <laughs> good thing I wasn't planning to resupply the Luftwaffe using that. That's going to be rough. And now I have to deal with this counterattack. I don't want them getting behind me and getting that infantry unit. I don't want to move trucks in. Oh, they're going to make me sweat here. Uh, well, at least he'll defend. They won't be able to take that point back. It's a little conservative of me, but got to do what I got to do. Can I shove you out? It says I can. Do I want to? Yeah, that's going to be what it is. <sighs> Sometimes, like, the safe bet is just to conserve your prestige. Do what you know you can do. And there, a <laughs> whole lot of nothing. That was pretty anticlimactic. I mean, I'll, I'll take not taking damage whenever I can, but I was really hoping to get that objective this round. Panzer one doing about as well as you'd think. But at least I can scout around. I'll see if there's anything in those mountains, and there doesn't appear to be. That's pretty nice. Take him out. Yeah... No, I don't want to end up next to that AT gun. I don't think it's going to move off the airfield, but I really don't want to take that chance. And at least with this attack, 
Now I have my objective. And I can open up and I can start moving infantry into contact. They're up in the mountains. That'll help. The Panzer II, I don't want it to be too close. But it can at least defend. You can defend. And cavalry in the mountains. Let's see. Oh, man. That terrain is rough right there. I don't blame them, but that, that hurts on one of my 38Ts. Even though it's not my core, I still like the 38Ts. They're about the best I can do now. At least the suppressed cavalry goes down pretty well. And uh, the tankettes are suppressed, but no, I just can't get anything going on them. These results are scary. Other than two Stuka strikes that were way above my estimates, I'm just rolling horribly right now. But again, that's kind of the fun of the game that otherwise it would just be a numbers puzzle and you could make the exact same moves every single time. So setting it like this mode at least prevents that and I do appreciate it. And right now they're going to try to flank even more and whew, at least that's my auxiliary unit. I can't be mad. It could have been so much worse, but I am glad they suicided right there. That's pretty nice. That, however, not good. At least it was an over, overstacked unit. Oh, well, you're going to give me the airfield for free? I'll take it. And I'll take that gun. Beautiful. Thank you, Poland. That was a gift. And it's weird that the mountain hex looks like it's going to give me a better result. Might as well roll with it. Good artillery. And a good suppression. I will definitely take that. That's nice. Um, I can put you in contact with two. If I attack with this guy, I can actually use that other infantry if I like and take out the AT gun. Or, you know what, now that it did that, I have a couple different options. Huh. If it's going to give me this results, yeah, that's worth trying. Definitely. Mm, no, nothing doing. A 38T is not going to give me anything. I got to I gotta chew that one over. Let me see. Tankettes. You. Yeah. I don't know. Where do you want to go? Just get out of there. Don't let the cavalry and the tankettes get an easy kill. Even though that is a recon, the auxiliary, it will count against me. I think you can lose two... And you guys have uh, three left, and then you can still get the decisive victory. But I can't afford to just throw them away on nothing. So right there. Uh, yep, I didn't want to take the safe bet. I wanted to try to destroy the more valuable unit. And maybe? Let's get a good roll. There we go. So right there, I mean, I could have taken out the cavalry. It was the obvious option, but the tank hats are worth more, and I wanted to roll the dice and see if I could get them, and I could. That's rough. I don't... It looks... Man, it's a rail hex. I guess it's the rough terrain. But, wow, it's just nothing doing. I don't know how I'm going to dislodge those guys. But if I surround them, maybe if I can get a good roll here, I can get them to retreat. Let's see if they'll do it off a three, maybe? Nope. But that shifts the results just enough. All right. And they do. So because they can't go back anywhere and they retreated with their move, that turns into a surrender. And I'm really glad those infantry set up the 38T. Those estimates were horrible, but once I took a couple steps off it, easy pickings. Let's see. Am I going to get anything good out of that? No. All right. Lufafa. Let's see what I can do. And yeah, even those forts are... Yeah, they're going to take down Stukas. I don't want to do that. Let's just take my free cavalry. Why not? And it is the recon flight, so... Ooh, yeah. I <laughs> don't want my fighter to go down. It is the recon flight, so I get to see a little more of their infantry. Let's move up the other Stuka. Get ready. And now... Oh, I almost forgot this group. That's good. Let's take this point. 
and see about continuing this flank. I still have to get these back to objectives. It's only turn five, but I want to make sure I don't slow down too much and get super complacent. Right there. Yeah, I'll take a city for one step. That's fine. That's going to give me more prestige. And if you notice, I'm at 1,784. From all the cities I'm taking, I've actually built up prestige from the beginning, which is nice because I know I've spent a little on my pioneers when I had to repair them. So still positive gains. And I will take that any day. I'm not going to throw away that auxiliary unit. And right there, Poland, not a whole lot, which is nice. So the southeast is clear. Now I just have to start wheeling north, get around those forts, and figure out what I'm going to do about those trenches and all of those city hexes. Three city hexes in an airfield is going to be rough. And right there, they have two artillery and anti-tank guns in support. So I gotta start chipping away at this artillery. Then I can worry about the anti-tank gun. Then I can start using the Stukas. And here, let's put anything I can on this artillery. See if I can take it out first. Mine is not quite gonna be in range, but I can at least plank at the infantry. See if maybe we can get them out of the way. And good result. Not even counterfire. All right, let's be brave. Let's move them into contact. If the fort fires at them, that's going to be bad for me. But if the fort is passive, then I can walk right by it, and it's going to give me more frontage to attack. Look at that. That was wonderful results for the mountains, especially mountain troops. Yeah, the panzer doesn't fare as well, but I'm real happy with how my infantry did there. Ugh. <sighs> Tankettes, decent result. That that full step anti air gun though, that's too much. I'm not gonna be able to do anything about that just yet. I can get him out of the way, and I think if those tankettes stay low enough, I can try to force a crossing. So that'll allow me to hit that other artillery, and then hopefully they can link up with these guys as these guys come in. That's going to be my goal. I'm about halfway through. We'll be at the end of this turn. So we're getting there, but we have to do basically the hardest work, which is reducing those cities on those fortified hexes. Nothing much there, unfortunately. And how can I get this artillery down? Rugged defense and only one... And they hit me for two. Oh, that's rough. This is this is going to be a long one. I don't know if I can reduce this in time. It's going to come down to the wire, I think. Yeah, don't know. I don't want to do that in the city hex. Don't want to do that with air support. Don't want to. Yeah, none of those moves are good. So let's just hit next turn. Let's see if I can move some more units up. Take out that artillery. Well, the anti-air gun took some pot shots, but nothing doing. And look at my anti-tank gun. Good for them. I know that's a weakened infantry, but hey, coming down from the mountains, at least uh, at least I was able to hold my own there. Let's see if they can return the favor. <laughs> oh, oh no, there's the attack I expected. There it is. And my panzers, good old auxiliary unit. All right. Let's have you go around, maybe? Yeah. Where do I want? <sighs> Garbage. I need to upgrade my artillery. Sometimes they they only move one per turn, and oh, it's just so slow. But the mobile artillery, one of the problems with them in this game, to balance it out, is they have very little ammo. So it's well designed that you don't get everything you want no matter what. There, 38T, finally. Gonna start shifting. And now they only have a weakened artillery. If I can take that out, I can start attacking the anti-air. And if I take that out, then I can start bombing those infantry and take the city itself. Let's scout. Okay. Well, for now, they only have one unit on the other two objectives. That's not 
bad at all. So if I can be quick about LUDs, I will be able to start making some progress. I'm feeling a little better than last turn now that I have some line of sight. However, if Poland has any prestige, and at least as far as I know, I don't know how to check on their prestige, then they can start plopping down units and making my life not so fun. Good result, but not quite what I was promised. It's false advertising. I'm going to sue them. I'm an American. That's what we do. Bomb that. No, nothing doing. Come on, Lufafa. You got to you gotta shoulder the burden a little more. A lot of these infantry units are reserves in the Polish campaign. They were just called up. This is not quite the veteran Germany that's going to invade Russia in 1941. So Lufafa, you, you got to pull your weight a little more. Huh. Yeah. I mean, they could leave the city and attack them, but I think I'm safe doing that. I'm not too worried. All right. Attacking from a river hex. Wow. Oh, man. Usually a river hex is so rough, but right there I got double the result I thought with no casualties. I wouldn't get in a habit of launching attacks from a river hex, but I really want to be able to start reducing that second artillery because I, I don't even feel comfortable attacking with any of these units right now. I just don't. Not yet. Let's make sure I didn't miss anything obvious. At least anything that won't get me killed. And let's go to the next turn. Oh! Oh, my poor auxiliary unit. And they're going to move in and attack me on the river hex. It doesn't work out for them, but they're being really aggressive. At least they vacate those trenches. That's not bad. I don't like fighting in the cities, but you know what? If you're going to give me some of your territory and give me some of your fortifications, I'm going to have to take that. And now... Oh, maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe. Will you retreat? Not quite... Let's keep... I want to keep beating up those tankettes. I want to keep them... Sometimes you can get the AI in a cycle that it keeps repairing. And then the unit is always not in full efficiency. And they never can really attack you. I'm going to get that Panzer out of there. But I do take out the artillery. So now we can start thinking about how to take out these guns. I have them dropped in efficiency. Let's move all my units. Let's get as many concentric bonuses as I can for now. Then we can take out the anti-air. Then we can start bombing. Then we can move in. Unfortunately, I, I have so many infantry, but they're just so much slower than these tanks. I'm going to have to rely on the tanks a lot. That was a pretty good result, though. I'm, I'm happy with that. And let's see if I can throw away a garbage recon. Take out the gun. And garbage is gonna garbage. Recon is real nice for the double moves and taking territory, but man, that that was nothing doing. Let's just keep having these guys scout. And now the Luftwaffe, they can come in and start trying to do stuff. It's going to be rough going in those city hexes, but at least I can try for... Um, attacks without any sort of counter. I do have this airfield in the south now. I'm going to move you out of the way. My mouse is being finicky. It actually doesn't want to let me refill that one Stuka. So let's start using my good infantry and see if we can dig these guys out. Right there, that's a good result. I will take that any day. Use my slightly weaker unit. One step there, and do I want to take territory? Yeah, they can counterattack me, but that's fine. My prestige is almost at 2,000. I'm really happy with how that's building up. I'm going to have a lot of options. If I ever do start using units, I won't be able to get their elite status back, but at least I'll be able to replace them not with something of inferior status. Like, if I lose a 38T, at least I'll be able to afford a new one. And can my infantry dig them out? Five to one. 
I will definitely take that. Not quite enough for the tanks to come in, though. But Northern Group, let's see if I can get a little more luck with my artillery and infantry, maybe? Will you retreat? No. Oh, those brave poles, that was crazy. Counterattack and no damage. Good, 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 good. I'm real happy with that. Moving to contact with the anti-tank gun. Do I want you there? No, I'm just going to take the points. I don't think that anti-tank gun in any sort of way with zone of control. I don't think anything should be able to reach that artillery. I think I'm good. Let me just do my final check. Hit my button, see if there's any attacks I really want to do. And not from a river hex and not with panzers into cities. Oh, the little tank cat's going to go. Yeah, I guess that was open, but minus three. Could have been worse, certainly. I do have the prestige for it right now. I can't be too mad. Their efficiency's down. I'm just sad I couldn't hit this uh, anti-tank unit here. So, push you out of the way. Almost dead. Good. Mad at those tankettes. That was mean. No, you're barely not going to let me into contact, huh? Okay, there we go. Just had to move him out of the way. Similar results, but the engineers usually have more luck in the city. And yeah, they're going to they're going to definitely get some results. No casualties, beautiful. So that's an objective down. I do have 3 to go. We have a couple turns. We have the rest of 9 and then we have f 4 more, but I think we're getting there. Hopefully my artillery is going to make the difference and my Stukas. And I can just keep reducing these units that will not get out of these cities. Well, not like that. Thanks, Stuka. Those pilots, whatever brandy or schnapps ration they get, uh, I'm cutting it. That was not good. Which, by the way, speaking of history, that amazes me, that armies for so long, and you can look at the requisition reports, actually had alcohol requisitions, and that was what they planned to go with on campaign. Like, especially in the 15 and 1600s, you look through any documents where they are trying to get their supplies, they're making sure there's enough booze. And even I was reading a book about Baltimore in the 1800s and workers, like workers in the harbor doing dredging and things like that. They had an alcohol ration. And it was one of the major expenses for the business owner. It was like the work was so crappy that they needed to have booze. Like, just fascinating. I love history and I love sources like that. That's why I get really excited for these games because not only does it get me thinking about all that crazy stuff and going off on tangents, but you know, games other than reading the sources and writing papers about it, it's a way to kind of feel like you're interacting with the history. And it's a way to see like what you could do with it and you know, you're playing it out, you're seeing can you do it better than the people there? Obviously, things are only going to get so authentic, but it's one of the reasons I just love war gaming. I've always been interested in history games. Even the first person shooters I play are usually historically themed or based on some sort of history. Oh boy. Our last objective is going to have a river in front of it and supported by artillery and its infantry in a city. So we're going to have lots of fun. But at least it looks like Poland is done with the counterattacks. And they bought an anti air and an anti tank. They're just going to spend money, all that prestige. They're going to dump it all on making this last objective horrible. But I kind of like that. That's like the um, unity of command sort of AI philosophy, which it knows it doesn't have to win. It just has to make you lose and that you have a time limit. And all it has to do is hold out and be a pain. So I, I applaud them for that. That's pretty fun. Oh, let's slowly start flanking around. At least I've taken all these bridges and cities and things so far. So I can flank around. I can try to hit the artillery. Then I can focus on the gun. Do the exact same order as Lodz. Artillery, anti-air gun, 
start bombing, go from there. At least that anti-tank gun is one hex away, so it's not covered by the anti-air. I mean, they can they can shoot at it from their turn, but it's not like how they're just covering that artillery unit and going to be an absolute pain. And this little objective, dang, I almost forgot about him. I was so focused on the other one. Oh, the artillery was not able to suppress him. Let me see. You run into decisions like this. You don't want to leave too many units back for those other objectives. Oh, man. I saw 7 TP. I thought I could get a free attack. And oh, wow, they have a little counterattack group. That is not a major objective, and so that city's not going to be worth the prestige. I'm not going to mess with him at all. Forget that. I'm hoping I didn't even activate some sort of counterattack script or something like that. I'm hoping the AI is just like, hey, buddy, s stay away from this stuff. Because I will happily leave them alone if they don't come down and get me. That's a pretty bloody infantry battle. Maybe the stationary panzer at not even a little. Those Panzer 1s, man, they're not even worth the training, but oh, my anti-tank gun. Brave little unit. The first couple matches, it didn't see much, and ah, that Panzer's out of gas. Would have been just a nice little triumphant march into the city. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to spend a turn gassing him up just to go, oh, yay, now I have a Panzer 1. Ouch. Three steps on my air and three steps on that air. And they buy another, oh, they bought another anti-tank gun. They are going to be a pain. At least they moved their anti-air. So now I can hit their artillery. That's nice, but oof. They're just like going to keep dropping units on this objective, hoping to delay me. And my slow pioneers, of course, they're not going to do me any favors either. I have a lot of infantry support, though. And hopefully I can move this out of the way. Ouch. So much prestige I'm going to have to pay. This this next turn is going to be rough. I'm going to be shelling out. I'm at 2300 right now, but it is going to be costly. And that's another auxiliary unit. I almost get killed, but I don't. So I am still going to consider myself a wonderful general and expect to be well paid by the Wehrmacht. Let's see. Can I get rid of you? There we go. Okay, and I'm occupying a hex adjacent to the city. So that's one less hex they can drop new units on if they're going to buy more. I don't know if they expect to keep up their shopping spree, but slowly and surely, we're getting there. All right, suppress you. It's turn 11. I mean, I, I have a little bit of wiggle room, but not a ton. So I really don't want this to go down the last turn. But if they keep buying units, they can be a pain. Let's see. Can I just kill you? Just give me a good dice roll. Or die roll, excuse me. No, not going to give me that. So we'll use you. There we go. And river hex, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I am happy you moved into a river hex. Resupply, resupply. You, did you run away. Don't just tank hits from an anti-air gun for no reason. Stuka, yeah. City Hex, that's about the best I can expect. That artillery's gonna need a turn. Oh, he's hurting. I mean, I'll move this infantry up, but that's, that's rough. I don't want to get him killed. He is a core. I don't think they have any units hiding there, so I can move away from Lodz. And you you stay there. Don't want my two-step unit getting destroyed. Even though I only need three auxiliary units, it's a point of pride now. No counter, and two turns left. Let's see. One artillery. He is not even a little suppressed. One Stuka. Not even a little hit. This is going well so far. I think sheer weight of numbers, I should be able to move them off, but... And another Stuka. I don't know. Engineer. There you go. That should be a decent result. Yeah, I'm hitting that artillery like I get to do it again. I wish, in my wildest dreams. Let's get my concentric bonuses. All right. There we go. 
I think that looks like it's going to do it for this turn. And awesome. They're going to give that up. I'm going to take it. And that should be the game. Move some guys up. I don't think they have a counterattack, but, you know, with all those units to the north, you can't ever be too careful. And so, decisive victory. Awesome. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've been enjoying. If you have enjoyed the history and the wargaming, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and stay excited about history. I will see you guys in the next video.